Great. So my name is Zachary Cohn. This is the session, The Questions You Should Be Asking But Aren't. Uh, I'm going to apologize real quick. I'm getting over a bad cough, so sometimes I may have to collapse in a little coughing ball. But I should be pretty okay. I'm definitely not contagious. So, to start off, um, the my name is Zachary Cohn. I run a consulting company called Oneful Consulting. And we do a lot of work with state governments and uh, big enterprise companies to help teach them how to go talk to their customers. We've, gone, we've all been to lots of these conferences, we've heard lots of people say, you should always go talk to your customers, but no one really ever says how. Uh, Des just gave a great talk in the Grand Ballroom before this, talking about a lot of techniques. I'm gonna go over some more techniques and then give you guys a chance to actually practice at the end. Because I hate giving talks where I just talk at you guys the whole time. I want to give you guys a chance to actually use some of this stuff. <coughs> so real quick, before we start, I want to go over uh, a little bit about just product development in general. So there's the classic method of product development, right? Someone gets an idea, usually in the shower, because that's where your good ideas come from. Uh, you figure out who does this idea help, what, what problem does it solve, what's the value proposition for it, and then you go and you sell it to people. And that works sometimes, right? But there's lots and lots of times that hasn't worked. And so I'm proposing that we actually flip this model on its head. That we start by going and figuring out who is the customer you want to serve. For big companies, sometimes it's a little bit easier. You already know who your customers are. For startups, you've got a lot more options. <coughs> then let's go talk to them. And let's go find out what problems they have. And once we've learned about the problems our customers have, Let's go figure out a solution to some of those problems. And basically what we're doing here is making sure the thing we build is actually solving a real problem for people. And this is one of my problems with whether it's Lean Startup or Agile is really popular in the state of Washington, who I do a lot of work with, where they have this methodology to build something really, really well. But people often forget to do the step before that, which is figure out what the thing we should be building is. And so, uh, when we're working with the state of Washington, we call this stuff pre-agile. Um, it's like all the stuff you need to do before you build something to make sure you don't build the wrong thing really, really, really well. Because they're particularly good at that sometimes. Uh, <coughs> and so, a lot of this comes into just talking to your customers, figuring out what their problems are, and then going to build a solution. So, I've got some rules and some techniques for you guys that I'm going to share, and then afterwards we're going to practice. So the first rule, uh, this is also a very short version of the full list. I think I have about 10 rules and maybe 8 techniques in kind of the full version of the presentation. 20 minutes isn't a super long time. So if you want the full version, I'll give you guys a chance to get that at the very end. First rule I want to talk about is past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior. So what does that mean? It's close to January, it's close to New Year's, and let's say we run into each other on the street sometime next month, and we start talking about New Year's resolutions, right? And you ask me what mine are, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to start going to the gym every week, three times a week for the whole year. And you're like, oh, that's great, that's really awesome. Uh, how many times a week did you go to the gym last year? And I'm like, twice, the whole year. <laughs> that's it. What are the chances of me going to the gym three times a week every week for the whole year? Ouch, less than zero. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> what have I done to you? No, really, he's right though. Like the chances of me actually going to the gym three times a week, every week for the whole year, when I went a grand total of twice last year, pretty, pretty low. Now what if instead I answered, I went to the gym twice a week, every week for the last year? Higher chance, right? I might still fail, but there's a much higher chance because my past behavior has indicated I go to the gym regularly already, I've been consistent for a long period of time. The chances of me altering that behavior slightly are pretty high. <coughs> so when you're asking people questions, make sure you're asking about their past behavior. Don't ask them what they would do. Don't say, would you use an app that? Or do you think you would? Or would you like something that? Instead, ask them what they've done in the past. Have you ever used something that? Have you ever done this? When's the last time you did that? And if you can uncover people's past behavior, 
you can predict what they'll do in the future pretty reliably because people don't tend to change their behaviors very drastically very often. And so if you can pattern match into an old behavior, much higher chance they're going to adopt the thing that you want them to adopt. And if they've never done anything like that before, A, it's really good to know that before you launch a product because you'll know that it's going to be a lot harder to get people to adopt this new thing. And B, maybe they won't evolve. <coughs> And you should know that before you decide to go invest potentially years and potentially tens of millions of dollars in this new product. The next rule is stories are better than statements. Right? Stories are better than facts. So let's say, sticking with the gym example, uh, let's say we were talking about our gym routines and you ask me, you know, what do you do when you work out? And I say I do push-ups, and I do squats, and I do pull-ups. Those are the, the main exercises I do. Oh, that's interesting. And you drop it down in your notes when you're building I don't know, a new fitness product or a new fitness workout uh, regimen or something. But that's just the statement, right? That's just the facts. That's just what I do. It's instead, you take a very subtly different <coughs> approach, and you say, tell me about the last time you did a workout, or tell me the story of how you work out. Tell me how you work out. You might find some very different things. Maybe I say, yeah, like once, once a week or a couple times a week, I'll you know, take a break from my work and I'll do you know, 20 push-ups and 20 squats and a few pull-ups on the little pull-up bar I have in my office. And that's my workout. You know, I do it once or twice, three times every week. Or maybe I do CrossFit, right? Maybe I do the CrossFit workout Cindy where it's five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 squats, as many rounds of that as I can in 20 minutes. And people are getting like 23 rounds of that, and they're just absolutely exhausted, and pools of sweat everywhere. Very, very, very different than, yeah, I work out at work sometimes, a couple times a week. <coughs> and so, <coughs> that's important, because if you're building an app or a product or whatever you're building, you need to understand how people are living their lives, how people are doing their behaviors. And if you make assumptions based on facts, or it's, it's really easy to make assumptions based on facts, but when you get a story from somebody, you get all this other detail that you never, never would have gotten from those facts. So that's why stories are better than statements. Now a couple quick techniques. My favorite, favorite way to open an interview, tell me about it. Tell me about the last time. So it could be, tell me about the last time that you went to the gym or had, uh, did a workout. Tell me about the last time you took a flight. Tell me about the last time you traveled or went on vacation or had a meal or made yourself food or used a app on your phone. And you can learn so much from those interviews, but it's important to make sure that you start that interview in the right place. You can't just start an interview by saying, what's your name? Hey, man. Hey, man. Say, hey, man. Uh, what's up? Not much, but, but, but great. Okay. Awful way to start an interview, right? Uh, you need to give them context about what you want to talk about, what you want to learn about, <coughs> but you don't want to give them too much context, or else you're going to start leading them, using leading questions, you're going to bias their answers. You don't want to do all that. So there's just like, dance between too much information and not enough. And so if you use, tell me about the last time you uh, went to a mall, then you don't have to do it. Then they know generally, okay, he's interested in malls. He's interested in the last time he went to a mall. So he just starts telling that story. And through other questions, through follow-up questions and add-ons and listening to his story and asking just a normal conversation, having a normal conversation with them and just learning about those experiences, we can get to what I ultimately want to learn. So the best way to open an interview is just tell me about the last time you did a thing. <coughs> why is the next best question in the world. Who here has heard the five whys? Raise your hand. Yeah, pretty much everyone, right? So it's basic for the three people who haven't, it's basically channeling your inner four-year-old, right? It's you ask a question and you there, you have a question, they answer it, and you say, why? So back to the gym example, uh, someone asks me, you know, I talk about New Year's resolution, and they're like, well, why do you want to go to the gym? <coughs> I'm like, oh, because I want to get in shape and I want to get fit. And they say, why? 
was like, well, because I feel out of shape now and I don't feel like I'm fit. Makes sense, right? And a lot of people stop there. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, Jack's out of shape. He's not fit, so he wants to get fit. It makes a lot of sense. But you should push farther. You should push past the point where you feel comfortable. Uh, a lot of people, in, in our work, a lot of people hesitate. They're like, I don't feel comfortable asking why he's out of shape. I don't feel, com I don't feel comfortable asking like, why he's unfit. But that's what we're trying to learn, right? That's what we need to know. And so maybe the answer is, I eat like a slob. I drink too much Mountain Dew. But maybe the answer is, I don't exercise. And maybe the answer is, I have some sort of disease or sickness that makes me susceptible to weight gain. And if you're building a product for someone who wants to go to the gym and get fit, you really need to understand what that deep, deep motivation is. And for some of those, we can even ask more whys, right? We can ask, why do you eat like a slob? Uh, why don't you work out? And we can go even four or five levels deeper there. <coughs> because fundamentally, if we're building a product for someone, the product we build for the person who has a sickness is gonna be fundamentally different from the product that we build for someone who eats like a slob. Right? And the way we market that product, the way we design that product, is going to resonate differently with different people. Uh, and so you want to deeply understand the motivations behind your users and your customers, and the reasons they engage in the behaviors that they do. Super, super important. So the last technique is simply tell me more. This is my favorite question, or favorite technique ever, because it's not really a question. Uh, I use this in interviews every single time. I use it with my girlfriend all the time when you're talking, and then they finish talking, and then you don't really have a great follow-up question. Um, or maybe you weren't even paying attention, like what happens sometimes. Uh, and you're just like, oh crap. They're looking at me with this like, your turn to say something, sort of like. And you're just like, tell me more about that. And then your girlfriend or your interviewee <coughs> start talking some more. And you're like, whew, so I dodged a bullet there. But what's really valuable about that is it's, it's, a, it's a nonsense question, right? Like, I didn't ask anything. It's an invitation to keep talking. And because it's a very, very open invitation, <coughs> the thing that they're going to start talking about next is going to be the most important thing for them to say. They're like, oh, well, Zach wants to learn more about that. Well, um, I feel like this is important, so I'll just start talking about this thing. And what's important to your user, to your customer, is definitely should be important to you as the person building your product for them. Right? And so often, I could never ask the question that would get them to start talking about that unless I just asked, tell me more about that. So that's my favorite, favorite technique uh, for just continuing conversation. <coughs> When you don't necessarily know, great picture there, yeah. Uh, when you don't necessarily know uh, where you should go next. So, because I hate talking in front of groups for hours and hours and hours, uh, and I think it's really boring when I sit in front of an audience for hours and hours and hours, um, it's practice time. So, we're gonna try something I haven't done before. People on the farthest side, on this side of your row, raise your hand. So there should be one column of people, great. The people directly next to them, look at them. You guys are partners. The next people over, look at the person next. You guys are partners. So basically, odds and evens are partners. One and two, and three and four, and five and six. So do that. I'm going to give you guys 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Great. Raise your hand if you do not have a partner. Raise your hand if you do not have a partner. Raise your hand high, be proud. All right, so you two, right there. And that should be everyone. Awesome, listen up, listen up. You guys don't know what you're doing. Why are you talking? I didn't give you guys the, the practice assignment yet. Shh. Awesome, great, thanks. So what we're gonna do is use these rules and techniques to any of your partner. I'm gonna give, uh, real quick, play rock, paper, scissors before you go. Uh, we're gonna do one round, unless there's a tie. We're gonna go rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No lizards, no spots, no atom bombs, like no, none of these like weird rules, all right? Just quick game of rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And then 
raise your hand when you have a winner. So go, really quick. It was 10 seconds. <laughs> got some constraints. You can only use the phrases, why, tell me more, and then, yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> you can pretty much only use the phrase, why, and tell me more. Now, a lot, people always ask, like, you know, well, it's really awkward to, to interrupt and say why, and it's sometimes hard to say why at the end of a longer story. So you can reference what you're asking why about, but you're just asking two questions, why, and tell me more. Okay? Everyone understand? I'm going to be listening too, so don't break the rules. So we're going to do that for 90 seconds, then we're going to debrief, then we're going to switch. So don't worry about that, I'll, I'll provide those instructions later. The prompt is, tell me about the last time you attended a conference. So the goal here is to get stories, to understand this person's experience, last, not this one, not this conference, but understand the last conference they went to and understand all those stories. And the idea here is maybe we're interested in exploring the conference space to build a product around it, okay? So you guys have 90 seconds to interview your partner. Um, go. <laughs> is a lot of times when you do these interviews, shh, when you do these interviews, and you go farther and deeper than you're really comfortable with, the interviewee learns about themselves. And that's incredible, right? If I had a business coming to me, and suddenly it's like a free therapy session, and I like learn about my deep intrinsic motivations behind why I do the things I do, like, I am definitely gonna buy whatever product they custom make for the solution or for the problem that I told them about. I'm definitely going to use that. That's awesome. So I love that. We're going to cut off there. We're going to switch. Interviewee is now the interviewer. Uh, another 90 seconds on the clock. Same prompt. Well, tell me about the last time you went to a conference. Okay? Go for it. All right. <laughs>
cut that off. Cut that off real quick. Eyes back up here. We've only got another minute or so left. All right. One or two pieces of feedback. What was something interesting that happened that time? Anything good? The, the answer to the question itself. <coughs> yeah, I mean, interviewing is hard. He said the why questions were hard to articulate sometimes. Interviewing is not easy. People get their PhDs in this shit, right? Like, <laughs> no one at this conference is good at this. Me, Des, no one is good at this, right? People get their PhDs in this. So we're just learning what we can, doing the best we can. And it's hard. But the more you do it, and the more you practice, and the reason, uh, I have people in my workshops practice with themselves, so you can practice in a safe environment. You can make all your mistakes in a safe place with people who don't matter. Uh, kick people out of the building, practice on the street with a fake fictional industry or problem or topic. And that's awesome, you can screw up a whole bunch of times in a safe place, so when you go do it for real, you're, you're better at it, real quick. So she said, the, the answers are so interesting that you start asking these questions that go away from the conference. And that's great. You start to get a much <coughs> broader picture of this person in their life. And you will be amazed at how often you are veering way off over here, and somehow it comes back. You learn something really interesting that's really important. So be okay with the questions and answers meandering a little bit. So that's all the time we have. Uh, there's two things I want to end with. One really quick, I love to get feedback. Uh, it's, it, I love this, this presentation is iterative, I like fast feedback, so in the interest of fast feedback, I want everyone to take out their phones. This is not a phone. But take out your cell phones, and then open up your email clients. <coughs> Write me an email right now. It's going to be super short, I promise. ZachCone at gmail.com is my email address. In the subject line, I want you to put two things. You put a Yes or uh, sorry, a one through five in terms of how worth it, how interesting was this uh, session? One is not interesting at all. Five is this was the most interesting session at the conference. Put a comma and then uh, I run a newsletter. We send stuff out every two weeks uh, about exactly this sort of stuff. If you want to learn more, just write yes. So one through five and yes. If you want to sign up, I'll sign you up for it, and you can learn all this stuff every two weeks in your inbox, and then just hit send. And it's super duper easy. Uh, I'll get that, I'll be able to make my presentation better, and you guys get to learn a little bit too. And the last thing <coughs> that I'd like to end these with uh, is just a way to say thank you and to show how excited I am. So I want you guys to give me a three, two, one countdown, okay? So three, two, one.